Hello and welcome to everybody. Uh, my name is Emil and I'm with Charlie. Hello. Um, we are part of the Digital Leaders Programme at Gresham's. Um, the Di Digital Leaders Programme is trying to teach parents and students how to stay safe online. It is because in the modern day and age, we've discovered that there are many ways in which technology and the internet can, da can be a danger to us. So at the moment we are 12 Digital Leaders and we are split into three groups. These three groups are self-image and identity, health and well-being, online, and misinformation online. Uh, today we're going to talk about false balance and Cambridge Analytica. So false balance essentially is where the media will uh, represent two sides of a story and even though the majority uh, may have one belief and there may be a very small uh, amount of people which believe an idea it may be represented as if there are a lot more than there actually are so the media could do this by trying to make what they say as more extreme or try to make what they say as as if there are a lot more people than there actually are yeah so um, a good example of that in recent times has been the kind of vaccine versus anti-vaccine people um, so I've noticed that that was represented quite disproportionately by um, a lot of media sites, which then led to quite a lot of people actually going into a more kind of anti-vaccine kind of area, where I would certainly say there is kind of less facts represented, which then kind of drew them in very much. Um, what do you think, Charlie? So I think that it may come across as if there are a lot more people uh, supporting anti-vaccine than there actually are in the media. So people may make this can cause this can be very harmful as people might uh, start generalizations and they may believe that there are a lot of people who actually are anti-vaccine when in real when in real life like it's less than you'd actually think and people just should respect each other's beliefs rather than read the media and get their beliefs from that and think that these people are ignorant just because of the way that it's written about in the media Absolutely, yeah. And I mean, this has been happening for a long time as well. Um, most historical example I can figure of that probably most people know about would be Nazi Germany, for example. Not everybody in Germany was, ha was holding kind of Nazi beliefs. However, because nobody was speaking out against them, that sort of led to a lot of people conforming to a system which, the first of all, they weren't aware of what they were doing and they also weren't fully aware of what ideology they are following. Obviously, it doesn't excuse the actions they did. However, just to put more perspective into the kind of psychological reasons as to why people did what they did. Let's now talk about Cambridge Analytica and to start off with, I'd like to ask you some questions, Charlie. Um, I would like to ask you, what is data that you might be comfortable sharing? Uh, I think I'd share most of my data to people which I see, but I, there are some things where I wouldn't share data about um, like where I live to strangers or things like that online. Is, that's just quite common sense, really, I think. Absolutely, yeah. So some common answers to that would probably be your name, your age, your nationality, hobbies, habits, perhaps your sexuality, um, or that kind of stuff. And also, Charlie, what data do you think is being collected about you? I think there's a lot of data that's collected about me which I, I don't think I'd know of. Or I think there might be some things where on Google I've accepted the cookies that maybe I shouldn't <laughs> have taken. Um, but I, I think that with algorithms online and, and other things like that, that I think um, that my interests can be developed online or my location may be taken from Google Maps or there may be, I may be suggested to look up more things in my suggested searches because of things that I've been looking up before. Absolutely, yeah. So some things that I am guessing are is being collected about me are uh, my interests, my search habits, my location, uh, my, and my political views and tendencies. 
And essentially, so Cambridge Analytica is a company that was founded in 2014 by its CEO, Alexander Nix. And they were advertising that they use data to change audience behavior. Which, first of all, that triggers a lot of red flags with me. <laughs> I don't know how is it with you, Charlie, but I personally, I don't like hearing that big companies are trying to change my behavior. And um, so how they did it, they did it, was that they were harvesting data from users of apps like Facebook and from anyone else connected to that user, which is quite different to what apps did before that. So obviously apps were collecting data on you, always have been. However, what Cambridge Analytica then did is that as soon as they were connected to a device or to a social network of a person, they then branched out to anybody who had, was in contact with that person. So even if people had not consented to sharing the data of other people, they were still being shared with Cambridge Analytica. That could have included anything like status updates, likes or even private messages. Um, this then enabled them to reach the uh, essentially almost the whole of the USA because they were able to reach so many different social networks. Like, doesn't that sound a bit creepy to you, Charlie? Uh, I think it's quite strange because you don't really know what's being taken. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, I'm sure there are some things which you won't know are being taken mm -hmm. and they, you, they won't find out. Um, it's quite difficult to see like, how things are being taken from you because you don't really think about uh, what you're doing and how that may affect what's, what data's taken from you. Yeah. But it just is taken, I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I'd like also to point, to point out that the users were not made aware that their data was harvested in such a way that they were also having to well, give up the data of the people they were in contact with. So, and also, so the company was founded on using Facebook data with the consent of Facebook. That's also something I'd like to point out, that Facebook consented to their users' data being taken by Cambridge Analytica in order to then uh, use the data to change their audience's behavior. Their actual, um, there's actual communication that has been shown in court where Facebook did agree to Cambridge Analytica using that data. And so Facebook previously would have, well, or any company really, would not have been possible to analyze such huge amounts of data, such huge am amounts of chunks of data for every single individual and to then file every single individual into different groups. However, what Cambridge Analytica did was that they used micro-targeting to analyze their data. Micro-targeting is essentially that they developed an AI to analyze their data and to create individually designed targeted messaging in order to influence opinions. These are targeted ads which then directly spoke to people and encouraged them to, for example, in the 2016 election, it was used to encourage voters that were undecided to vote for Donald Trump, which has afterwards been worked up, but that could have also been a contributing reason as to why he won. And just to put into perspective how much data they had, Cambridge Analytica had about 4,000 to 5,000 data points per person in America. So per American citizen of the USA, they had 4,000 to 5,000 data points. Data points are just pieces of information. So this could range from a per that a person is married to what their favorite ice cream flavor is really. So they really have a very wide variety. So what do you think about that, Charlie? Well, it's quite difficult to take in and it makes you feel a little bit powerless mm -hmm. as such because even though you're using an app, they can also be contributing to giving your data away without you actually knowing. Because like it says in the Cambridge Analytica, you're not notified and these people aren't weren't notified. Um, and also it's quite difficult to see because you don't know where the right answer is because there's not really a right answer. If you use different applications or you try to limit, there's, these things always find themselves back to you or it's just quite difficult, I think. Totally, yeah. What creeps me out the most about this 
that it was using Facebook data, you know, and that's not just Facebook, that is also Instagram and WhatsApp, which I'm thinking are three of the like biggest social media websites and applications that are being used today. So it wasn't just that they were using some Facebook data, they were having this massive system of data that was all being collected on the people and then used it to, well, quite as they say it, use the data to change audience behavior, which first sounds very remote. I mean, they know what they're doing. They're not obviously going to say, use data to change American citizens' views. Because yeah. that would obviously, that sounds a bit unconstitutional to me. <laughs> um, but they did it and said, use data to change audience behavior to advocate to big companies to then advertise for their products. And they were able to do so very, very successfully, as was seen in a lot of statistics. It was, it's actually able that, like, it's actually possible that most Americans in the USA were affected by Cambridge Analytica. Um, and Charlie, just another question for you. What do you think the punishment for that was? What, what do you think the punishment should have been for Cambridge Analytica? Uh, I think there should have been certainly some rules put up or quite a big fine for the company because I don't think it's right that they should be taking your data without you being aware of it. And it's just, it it doesn't make you feel very good because you, you don't really know. You don't know what's being released about your data or what data is being taken because there's always someone behind what's going on but you don't actually know who it is. Absolutely. Um, I think a big reason as to why people felt so uncomfortable was that they were not in control anymore, like you said. You were, like, the individual was not in control of deciding, okay, I trust this company to have my data because they were never even informed about their data being used in such a way. Um, so actually, in... The UK, where also Cambridge Analytica also has a, had a small effect, but not as large as in the US. In the UK, Cambridge Analytica, or actually best to say Facebook, Facebook was fined um, £500,000 for their actions. However, in the US, they were fined a record fine of five billion US dollars. Do you think that's enough? Do you think just asking the companies for money for compensation for the actions they did is enough? Or should have there been some other controls in place for them to prevent to do that again in the future? I think that it getting some getting seeing the company have to pay some money, which isn't that huge for the company, it doesn't really make you feel compensated for or cared for because they're taking your data and they just have to pay a fine which isn't so impactful on their company and it just doesn't it doesn't really feel right I don't think absolutely um, some of the punishments I think should be in place for data theft would for example be cyber supervision and control that the government is essentially placing a company on probation is I think the best way to describe it and that then for a, a period of time the government is watching over closely what companies that social media company is collaborating with and who they are letting use their data. And Charlie, under what circumstances would you agree to data be collected for the greater good? I think to see scheming of big organisations, I think that would be quite useful to, to see. Or you might want to be able to track this data in order for safety because if there's terrorist organizations plotting things on a website or an application then you want to make sure that you can track that down yeah that's a really good point i also think that at the moment obviously we've been in a pandemic for two years now and i think it was i'm not 100 percent sure but i think it was um china a city in china that actually used their citizens location using an app to ensure that they stood in lockdown and didn't break the lockdown rules 
And that, again, is a question, I guess, if that is already too much breaching the own individual's freedom, if that can still be counted as having free will and not being too, well, I guess, taking away the democratic rights of every citizen to do what they want. What do you think about that? Like a country using a citizen's location to make sure they're staying in lockdown. I can, underst- I can understand it to a certain extent but I think that if you're taking their their location, it doesn't feel so precise because you can't see any reasoning or any sort of like backup to where they're going or why they are going. And I can understand that you don't want the virus to spread, but I think there are definitely better ways to execute this than tracking locations and data. Yeah, I agree. I think that obviously it's very important that when a lockdown is in place for people to follow that those lockdown rules. <laughs> Talking about that now that Boris Johnson's kind of <laughs> in the fire about it. Um, but I certainly think there are limits that governments should have as to what extent they are allowed to collect data on their citizens in order to ensure they um, oblige to lockdown rules. And Charlie, do you think that w- what data in specific could be collected by governments for the greater good? I think that if people have very extreme views or the, which could cause harm to society or they're trying to execute plans, I think that sort of data could be collected in order to put a stop to this early or to try and track down those that are trying to cause harm. But I don't think that it should be abused and that other people's data should be taken in a harmful way without any sort of permission. Yes, uh, I agree, definitely. I think there should be some limit as to how far governments are allowed to use individuals' data to analyse their behaviour and make sure that they're not a terrorist, I guess. Right. However, that would, I, I believe personally, that that would easily lead into that power being abused actually by the government. So there should be some limits in place and some controls in place as to how the data is collected and how the data is used by the government. Okay, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I hope you liked the first episode of the Digital Leaders Programme. We will be uploading more episodes soon in the future and I hope you liked it. Thank you. Thank you.